Right now on the phone with us, we've got Mayor Latoya Cantrell from New Orleans. Mayor Cantrell, thank you so much for joining us tonight. No, thank you so much for having. I wanted to start off by asking you, uh, you know, I paid close attention to your press conference yesterday. I, you know, I wanted to ask you about the post evacuation plans you have in place. Should it be necessary? Can you just walk us through that? And you told us about the coach buses that are already positioned and in place and tell us, you know, what kind of things would trigger uh, such a need for post evacuation efforts? So the bottom line is, is that we will know how impacted we are come Monday morning. Uh, the good news is that the storm should rapidly decline by Monday morning, and the fact that it's morning, daybreak, light, it really does allow us to assess the conditions that we may see ourselves in or find ourselves in at that particular time. Uh, we are working on the post-storm uh, evacuation needs, should that be, but we will know more when we have to respond based on the Monday morning uh, aftermath of Hurricane Ida. Madam Mayor, I know this is something that you have uh, responded to ad nauseum. I even found myself on Facebook trying to explain it to people. What she said was there was not enough time for the contra flow. <laughs> but I want to ask you this directly because uh, I, I, a lot of people just made their own decision personally uh, to get out of harm's way and evacuate. But uh, uh, there was still a question about, you know, why not with a category four storm, a mandatory evacuation. If you could just briefly walk through that one more time. Sure. So as it relates uh, to a category, it really does depend upon the time. Uh, and the state decides whether or not you uh, implement contraflow. However, when you look at the rate of these storms that we're having, Ida is no different. Uh, we've seen this and we've been talking about this, especially based on the season that we had in 2020. I think about even Michael, how it came so fast and so soon. You don't have time to evacuate uh, thousands of people. And the worst case is people stuck on the interstate. So you have to make the call. And the call is, is one, um, voluntary evacuation, those who want to, to do so and encourage them to do so. Those who do not, they need to be prepared to shelter in place. This is the same thing that we've done in the past because it's the safest, it's the safest thing for our people and for our ability to respond to their needs post-disaster. But we do not want to put people in harm's way when we know, when we know time is not on our side. It was very clear um, from the governor on yesterday, in addition to and mainly the National Weather Service that indicated that we were not in a position, meaning the state, in a position to move forward with a contraflow effort. I asked for that, and after uh, they reviewed and they said absolutely not, it would not work, we don't have the time. I appreciate you answering that. I know um, that was something that had kept coming up even still at this hour. Uh, it was coming up, but just to, uh, if you could walk us through uh, the moving parts, everything that is in place and already staged uh, uh, to prepare the city for impacts from Hurricane Ida. So when you think about our, our infrastructure, all of our assets, whether that is of course, our public safety team from, from NOPD to, to fire, to EMS, to Homeland Security, um, uh, to our Department of Public Works. All of our public assets are staged and ready to go, just like they are with every storm that comes our way. This is nothing different, meaning we have all of our equipment, both, both vehicles as well, staged out of harm's way. As we prepare to pivot very quickly to a post-storm uh, response, the Louisiana National Guard is here to support all embedded in our EOC, uh, all of our public safety teams, FEMA is embedded as well, uh, the, the state, in addition to the National uh, Weather Service. So all of this is in full operation here at City Hall uh, in our EOC. And we're in constant communication with all of the unified command. So we're prepared. What we need now is for our residents to be prepared to stay 
in their place of safety tonight from midnight through Sunday, the entire day and night tomorrow. We expect winds to pick up by 7 a.m. in the morning above that 35 miles per hour. And you know at 35 miles per hour, there's no energy, meaning, you know, trucks on the road to help. There is no RTA. Uh, and so we need people to pay attention, to be prepared, to stay all day tomorrow through daylight Monday morning. And that doesn't mean when Monday morning comes to go out on the street. That means that the city will be prepared to thoroughly assess the impacts of Ida and respond accordingly. And May Mayor, Madam, uh, uh, Madam Mayor, I I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you about Katrina as we approach the 16th anniversary. We've heard the governor and, and you yourself just now talking about just how much more sophisticated the systems and infrastructure, um, you know, are compared to the time of Katrina. Uh, what would you say to residents, you know, feeling a little anxiety on this anniversary of Katrina as we brace for Ida? Right. Well, what I will say to, to our people is that um, I understand the anxiety, no doubt about it. But I want to give them some level of comfort as best as I can for them to understand that the investments in our infrastructure are far greater 16 years later. The billions of dollars invested in the levy protection system and every model that the CORE uses, as well as the National Weather Service uses relative to our levy protection system, if we're inside the system, we will see our levees functioning at top notch. So the failures to our system are not expected at all with every single model, and they only produce worst-case scenarios. And with every worst-case scenario, we are protected by our levy system. So I want to give, you know, some, some level of peace and assurance to our people as it relates to that. However, doesn't mean that we're not going to be impacted by wind. It doesn't mean that the electricity will not go out. It doesn't mean, right, that we will not potentially have tornadoes. So we have to be mindful of these things. So we're absolutely still in harm's way, but it's nothing like we experienced 16 years ago. But I understand the anxiety I'm hearing from our people even directly, but they seem to be comforted in knowing that we are in a better place. And, and so I just say to our folks, take heed, be prepared to stay in from now throughout all day tomorrow, Monday morning, we will get through this, we will assess the damages, and we will respond to the post a storm as needed. Thank you, Gina and Sella. All right, thank you, Madam Mayor. We appreciate your time. And Mayor Cantrell there, of course, you know, reiterating for us, trying to offer a little bit of comfort and peace for people. She herself have been getting so many calls and we have too from viewers, uh, just really worried, uh, a little bit nervous uh, about uh, the 